we feed our chickens on grass that they grew by scratching and fertilizing. We haven't put any seeds out there since we've been here. We haven't done any fertilizer to it. That's all them. What's up, modern steaders? Let's go check on our bod rocks and meat birds. Let's see how they're doing. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, guys, June 10th and 11th, Mother Earth News is having a fair in Burlington, Vermont. We're gonna be taking a ride over to the Mother Earth News Fair on June 10th, so if you guys are gonna be there, leave it down in the comments below. We'd love to meet you. Nobody else is beating up in here, right? Behaving yourself, mama. At the meetup the other day, me, Justin Rhodes, and another guy, Sean, was there. We were talking chickens, believe it or not. And one of the things we were talking about was having the Bodrocks in here help the Cornish Crosses learn how to become a chicken and learn how to scratch and peck and eat grass and stuff like that. You know what? I actually think having the Bodrocks and the Cornish Crosses is really beneficial for the Bodrocks. I think they eat more and they're growing a little faster. I don't know if you guys have watched but the Bodrocks are just going nuts and eating their food. Look at them all. They're all really intensely eating. It's kind of like if you have pigs, you should have at least two pigs because they have a competition and they're going to eat more with two pigs versus just one pig. So the Cornishes, I believe, are getting the Bodrocks to eat more and grow a little faster. I really believe that this relationship is benefiting both the Cornish Crosses and the Bodrocks and it's benefiting us too. Our Cornish crosses are gonna be eating more grass and more bugs, which is gonna make them healthier for us. So it's a win-win relationship for everybody. I keep my water jug down here when it's not completely empty, and there's snails on the thing. My chickens are getting some escargot. Mother Hen is raising up the chicks very nice. She's a good mother, but not good at very many other things. Look how pretty the Icelandic chicks are. Guys, just because you can't get your chickens on your pasture or your lawn, that doesn't mean there's no reason why you can't chop, drop it, and bring it to them. It's been so wet and rainy here. This is the first time we've been able to mow down here. And our field's grown pretty good this year too. But we got our chickens up and our apple orchard working. We don't have them on the pasture. So we're just going to mow the hay, collect it, and feed it to them. Why not? Might be a little bit more work for us, but we're still utilizing as much as our resources as we can here at the Modern Homestead.
That's how we prepare our pasture for our pasture raised chickens. If the grass is too tall, it's going to be really hard to move the chicken tractors. But even if you get the chicken tractors in here, the chickens aren't going to know what to do. They're just going to mow it over, flatten it out, and it's just going to die. They're not going to gain anything out of it. It's going to be a pain for you to clean up your pasture later on. So we just mow it down. We leave it at a couple inches high. We rake up half of it, three quarters of the grass, and we'll bring it to the egg layers. And we'll leave some of it down here to ferment. More bugs will grow in it. And then the chickens, when we bring them over here, will go to town and have fun. We better go shut that fence off before we get zapped. What are you guys up to, huh? Good morning. Look, the ducks are even coming over. <laughs> One of the first things they're going for is the apple petals. They love those things, guys. <laughs> hey, Mr. Biggs, can we make one video without you rooster bombing us? I don't think we've had a video lately that he hasn't been in or that we haven't at least heard him in. They were talking about you. All right, modern steaders. If the audio is not that great, I'm sorry. I left my good camera in the house. We're mowing our bigger pasture right now. We're just using the iPhone. So the audio is sometimes eh. But this pasture right here, I'm gonna get down and show you. We ran the chickens on it one season last season and we just had the egg layers on there all season and we had one thing of meat birds and then some turkeys that was it we I don't know 55 60 birds on this pasture it's probably about a half acre an acre sized pasture and that's all we've had running on this thing before that this field was abandoned for years I'll show you a few bare spots of what the whole pasture looked like over here but look at this right now guys this is See, I don't know how good you can see it. We're up to my waist almost in tall pasture land grass. And it's not even, we haven't even planted our gardens yet. So it's not, hasn't been that nice out. We've gotten a lot of rain, but the warm weather hasn't been here yet. Just look at this. I mean, this is crazy. Look how high it is on the tractor. That's some pretty tall grass, guys. And the whole field is that way. It's not picking it up that good. But let me go show you over here. This is what the pasture looked like last year. And this is what it looks like now. So we're gonna finish mowing. We're gonna have a lot to rake up and give to the chickens and the apple orchards and we'll save some in a pile for our garden. That just really excites me, modern status. But look at that, one season. So what's this pasture gonna look like next year? Or later on during the summer once we get the chickens out here and once we get New York City out here. New York City's gonna have a field day being on this pasture. I mean, we're gonna be able to support some goats or a cow pretty soon here. And it hasn't been that long, guys. Like I've been saying, we overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in five or 10 years. Look what, this is just one year. So what can we do of five or 10 years of just running chickens on here? This is just chickens and I mow it in between to keep the size of the grass down so the chickens can manage it. And then we give the grass to the pigs when we had it last year. So, I mean, we're using what we can with what we have. We're using our resources. We don't have goats. We don't have cows, but we have a mowing. We have a lawnmower. We have a tractor. And then we have pigs. So the pigs can turn that grass into bacon. So why not, guys? Just think out of the box and we can change our status quo. We can challenge it. We can change it. I mean, this isn't compost. This doesn't go to the trash. This doesn't go to the curb of the sidewalk. This goes to our chickens or our pigs, and then it goes to our bellies. With awesome food, guys. Keep it up.
<laughs> hey guys, we got a good problem going on right now. Look at that bucket load of grass. I bet you we're gonna have at least 10 more of those out in that pasture. But think about it, this is really cool. We're gonna be feeding our chickens over there. We've been shredding this already up. We're feeding our chickens on grass that they grew by scratching and fertilizing. We haven't put any seeds out there since we've been here. We haven't done any fertilizer to it. That's all them. And then they're gonna be eating it, making eggs for us, and revitalizing our apple orchard with it. Oh guys, I think we got stuck in it. No, it's just the grass. Oh, we got, we had so much in that bucket load. Yeah, we'll have to come over here afterwards and straighten out the fence, but that's just three buckets out of the field. All right guys, we got two thirds of it done. We got right here behind me up on that hilltop and over there left to do and of course it started raining this bucket is empty so we're not going in no matter how wet we get until that bucket's full so let's get this area raked up and bring it to the chickens We're gonna plant some winter squash. We have some seeds from High Mowing Company, and then we have our own buttercup seeds that we collected, I think, five or six years ago when we grew a big, nice, big crop in mass. We'll start off with these. Okay, how many each hole? One in each hole, and then whatever we can't fill up, we'll use our old seeds and wow. see how the germination goes. Well, these are huge. They are pretty big, aren't they? Uh-huh, they don't even fit in the hole. You gotta squish them in. Just gonna put a little bit of dirt over each one. We're gonna stick this one where the cucumbers were. And let's okay, hold back up for a minute. Let's check and see if any of these other plants are germinating. Oop! Look at that. Time to move the summer squash up. So we'll put that there. Let's check on those, these other ones. Oh, we got a few starting, so probably tomorrow those will go up on the by the light. And that is the zucchini. Let's check the spaghetti squash. Oh yeah. You like spaghetti squash? Uh huh. We have one in there, so but probably tomorrow the rest of these will all be up under the grow light. Awesome. She's still got some sores, but she's a lot in rarely good health. And she's moving around. We thinned out the cucumbers and we're going to give Blackie the sprouts. So it should help her too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, put them in there. She might not take them from your hand, but she'll eat them at some point. Can you put them in the hole? Yeah, stick them right through the crate. So we've been putting garlic, apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of elderberry syrup in her water, and it seems to be helping her out really good. All right, modern steaders. Don't forget, we're going to be at the Mother Earth News Fair June 10th. If you guys are going to be going there, leave it in the comments below. We'd love to meet up. The series we're doing right now we're calling The Growing Season. And what that's going to be is what we're doing during our growing season to grow our own food. We're trying to put up as much of our own meat as possible this year as, and as many of our own vegetables as we can get growing. So if you like the series, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on it. And we'll see you right back here, guys, tomorrow. At Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.